In Latvia, voters overwhelmingly rejected a referendum that would have made Russian an official state language alongside Latvian. Ethnic Russians in Latvia who initiated the ballot say they face discrimination in employment and in the criminal justice system because of language barriers. But despite voters' emphatic rejection of the proposal, language politics is set to remain a powder keg issue in the future. FSRN's Ben Cedar reports from Riga. It's 9.30 in the morning, and Riga's jobless trek through the dirty snow as they head to the unemployment office. A scruffy man smokes cigarettes outside the doors to the building. Viktor Kravchenko is a former dock worker who has come seeking to extend his unemployment benefits. He says he's been out of work for six months, and despite being born and raised in Latvia, he's a non-citizen. I can't find work anywhere. It's almost impossible to find a job if you don't know Latvian. Only illegal work or with private firms or private work. How can you fill out a form in Latvian if you don't know the language? In this tiny Baltic country of about 2 million people, language is a potent political issue. Russian speakers make up over a third of the population, and roughly half of them are non-citizens. Many are unhappy about the government decisions to reduce teaching in Russian state high schools and universities. Ethnic Latvians account for around 65% of the population, and non-citizens can't vote. So political observers say the referendum never had much chance of success. According to the Latvian Electoral Commission, 70% of voters turned out, and 75% of them have voted against the proposal. Although the referendum failed, Supporters succeeded in focusing the debate on claims that government policy is creating social barriers and injustices. Tatiana Zdanica, a Russian member of the European Parliament, says the Latvian government's policies have limited educational opportunities for Russian speakers. Independent Latvia has introduced very, um, uh, very effective repressive apparatus uh, against those who have graduated uh, schools uh, in minority languages and uh, there is a requirement introduced in the legislation that these people must have a certificate of um, Latvian language knowledge if they want to occupy certain professions and the list of these professions is growing, growing and growing. I say you, even a a, a person who who is privately employed to to watch what is happening in the cemetery must know uh, know Latvian language. Zdanika says the global financial crisis increased the disparity between ethnic Latvians and Russian speakers. The unemployment for, for Russian speakers is much uh, bigger than, than uh, for others. Um, ethnic um, representatives of ethnic minorities are underrepresented in, all, in the, gov- uh, in the governing bodies, in prestigious pro- professions. They are overrepresented in um, personal um, of prisons, for example, and the, the demographic characteristics of um, for minorities are much worse than the ones for um, ethnic Latvians. Some Latvians acknowledge that Russians do face some unfair treatment, but reject that there is any large-scale discrimination. Niels Muzhnex is a Latvian and was recently appointed Human Rights Commissioner for the Council of Europe in Strasbourg. Russians in the Baltic states do not feel particularly discriminated against um, compared to the Roma, uh, Turks, or even Central and East Europeans in in Great Britain and Ireland. Um, But there are uh, certain problematic issues to to Latvian minority policy. Uh, For example, you still have stateless children being born in Latvia uh, 20 years after independence. Uh, You have a lot of state interference in the private sector to regulate language use. Actually, Latvian language planners stole a book from uh, language planners in Quebec in terms of trying to regulate language use in the private sector. The National Alliance, a right-wing political party and member of the ruling parliamentary coalition, opposed the referendum. 
Yanis Tumul's led the party's vote no campaign. He says the regulations on language use in the private sector are justified. If you go to a barber shop, uh, I don't know how it is now, but uh, some years ago, it wasn't official requirement to, to speak with client in Latvian language. Now it is requirement. And we have this uh, state language center when you can call and complain about persons which, which uh, did not service to you in Latvian language. And, and this inspection can, can go and, and, and um, make fines for, for these persons. Tormul says the debate over language is not just a social issue. For the Latvian government, it's also a security issue. We have to care about uh, Russia's everyday activities, uh, how they use Russian language as a tool for their soft power foreign policy. Yeah, they will never get back from the NATO, Latvia, Estonia and Lithuania, but what can they can do, they can make uh, those uh, member states more pro-Russian. But everyday Russians are less concerned about geopolitical alliances and more about just getting by. Viktor Kravchenko did get a three-month extension in unemployment benefits, but at a reduced rate. He's not sure about future employment prospects. Even though he was born and grew up in Riga, his language skills and his status as an alien bar him from access to most jobs. It's no wonder, he says, the level of imprisonment is higher among Russians than Latvians. He's been unemployed for six months, he's returned to drinking hard alcohol, while some of his friends have turned to criminal activities, like car theft, to get by. Ben Cedar, Free Speech Radio News, Riga, Latvia.